Hello everyone. One of the very common questions we get asked is, when will 2G and 3G networks be switched off now that 5G is here? This is a very valid question, but not an easy one to answer. However, we will give it a try. Keep watching. Back in 2017, Zahid wrote an article explaining that different parts of the world will have different approaches to switching off 2G and 3G. While his assumptions have mostly been correct, it is still a very complicated decision. Before proceeding further, we just want to point out to people who are unaware that all our presentation slides can be downloaded from our SlideShare channel. You can get a link to Zahid's blog post and also a link to the PDF we maintain about which networks are switching off which technologies in that presentation. Let's understand the concept of refarming and switch off. Let's say a network has 2G, 3G and 4G networks running as shown here. Here the operator has two blocks of 2G spectrum and one block each of 3G and 4G. Now they decide to change one of the 2G blocks to 4G. So instead of transmitting GCM on that spectrum, they are now transmitting LTE. This is refarming, reusing or repurposing of the GCM spectrum to LTE. Now let's say they decide to use the remaining 2G spectrum for 4G as well. There is no more 2G left, it's been switched off. In the same way, you can see that 3G has been switched off as well here. Dividing the world between developed and developing nations, we can start by listing our assumptions for 2G, 3G switch off in developed nations. 2G frequencies will be refarmed continuously for 4G, 5G until they can be switched off completely. Unless they are being used for MTM, IoT, in which case a thin layer will remain. This is the case with quite a few operators. 3G frequency refarming will start at earliest possible opportunity as more users move to 4G, 5G. The last 20 to 30% of the users will have to be moved with in incentives and then with the threat of service closure. In many cases, this won't be necessary as anyone with newer devices would already have 4G LTE support. This will mainly be people who have been given hand-me-down phones or, on, or are on prepay or pay-as-you-go schemes. They may just be using the second number for receiving calls. This is already happening today and we are expecting these 3G refarming or frequencies and closure to start accelerating from 2023 onwards. Here are some examples of switch off announcements from developed nations. Telenor Norway shutting down 3G in 2020 and plans 2G shutdown in 2025. This is in contrast to what we said, but there are always exceptions. We wanted to show the exceptions here too. AT&T in USA shut down their 2G GSM in December 2016. All three operators from Singapore shut down their GSM networks in 2017. Dutch telco KPN has announced that it will cease to operate its 3G network by January 2022. It will retain its 2G GSM network for those few customers who won't have a Volte capable smartphone by then to still be able to use voice calls. The telco has also indicated that it will repurpose its 3G spectrum for LTE use. Finally, the UK operator EE has been refarming 2G and 3G spectrum for 4G. It hasn't officially said anything about switch off for either of these two technologies. Looking at developing and less developed nations, 3G would generally be switched off before 2G. This is mainly because many people still rely on 2G feature phones. Also, 3G phones support 2G so they can fall back to using 2G when 3G is switched off. While voice will work fine, data speeds on 2G will suffer. This will force people who can upgrade phones to move to 4G. Of course, 2G will also work for 4G CS fallback as there are many 4G devices that don't support Volte and in a few cases, networks that don't support Volte. Many operators in the developing countries believe that GSM will be around till 2030. 3G is expected to be a dominant technology in Africa until 2025. Looking at some examples, back in 2017, Airtel India announced that they will shut down the 3G network in three to four years and continue with 2G and 4G. Thailand, on the other hand, plans to switch off its 2G services by October 2019. This can be done because their regulator, the National Broadcasting and Telecommunications Commission, NBTC, has approved a proposal by three of the nation's mobile operators, ICE, DTAC and TRUE, to shut down 2G services by the end of October 2019. Some spectrum will be used for M2M and IoT device support. 
Finally, Movistar, which is a brand name for Telefonica in Latin America, plans to shut down 3G networks by 2025, but will maintain the 2G network indefinitely because it is perfect for M2M and IoT services. This is applicable for all the countries they operate in in Latin America. The GSMA represents the interests of mobile operators worldwide, uniting more than 750 operators and almost 400 companies in the broader mobile ecosystem, including handset and device makers, software companies, equipment providers and internet companies, as well as organisations in adjacent industry sectors. In simple terms, you can say it's an international lobby representing the interests of the mobile industry, but mainly the mobile network operators. They produce a lot of events, the most popular being the Mobile World Congress, MWC. In addition, they produce a lot of reports, etc. One of their very popular reports is the Mobile Economy Report. The one this year was released just after MWC. The report contains a lot of useful information and numbers, but we are going to look at it briefly for this topic and point of view. The population of the world was approximately 7.6 billion in 2018, but it is expected to grow to 8.2 billion by 2025. The number of SIM connections were 7.9 billion back in 2018, but is expected to grow to 9.2 billion. Here we have to remember that many people will have more than one connection. So the unique mobile subscribers back in 2018 were 5.1 5 billion, but will grow to 5.8 billion in 2025. Looking at population versus SIM connections, 2.4 billion people still won't have any SIM connections. Here we have to remember that many of these people will be very young people under the age of 10. In 2018, if we look at the connections in the world, 2G accounted for 29% or 2.29 billion connections. 3G was slightly behind with 28% or 2.21 billion connections. 4G had 43% or 3.4 billion market share. There was no 5G, of course. In 2025, 5% or 460 million people would still be using 2G. Here it has to be mentioned that 2G today includes GSMA as well as CDMA and other technologies. But whatever 2G remains in 2025 will be GSM only. There will be a good amount of 3G connections, 20% or 1.8 billion connections. Finally, 4G will be the dominant technology in 2025, with 5.52 billion or 60% of connections. There will be 15% or 1.38 billion 5G connections behind 4G and 3G. If we look at the Asia Pacific region, 4G will be the dominant technology by 2025. Here we have to remember that APAC is a very large area with many people. It includes India, China, Australia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Japan, South Korea, etc. This chart may not necessarily give a great insight. Orgy will again be the dominant technology in the CIS region in 2025, followed by 3G and then 5G. In Europe, because it is an advanced market, most users will be on 4G and 5G in 2025. Only a small amount of 3G and 2G connections will exist. Latin America in 2025 will be 4G followed by 3G. Small amounts of 5G and 2G will still exist. The MENA region is interesting. 4G is lead the leading technology in 2025 but there is a good number of connections on 3G. This is followed by 2G and then 5G. The reason this is interesting is that three Middle Eastern operators, that is Oridu, Saudi Telecom Company and Etisalat, have claimed to launch the first 5G worldwide. North America will be the only area in 2025 with 5G being the dominant technology, followed by 4G. Very small amounts of 3G and 2G will be present. Sub-Saharan Africa is an interesting case. It is the only region expected to have more 3G with 59% more than any other technology. There will also be 14% 2G and 4G would be just 24%. 5G is expected to be just 3%. 
the operator MTN, which is very active in the Middle East and Africa, is expecting similar numbers. According to their own forecast, they are expecting 61% of their users to be on 3G in 2025. What are the challenges in Africa at a very high level? From a user point of view, it's the cost of devices, the cost of connectivity, and a very important reason is that electricity is not always easily available for charging. From an operator point of view, a low RPU per site outside urban areas, extremely low RPU per site outside suburban areas, ROI takes a very long time considering the OPEX and maintenance, rural sites lack power, security and are often unreachable, users refuse to move to newer technologies, and there is a high cost of maintaining multiple technologies. These are some high level challenges. There are many more and depend on the market. Things are changing quite fast though, and these statistics can change very quickly thanks to new smart feature phones. Much like Android and iOS, a new light operating system is making these smart feature phones possible. Let's look at an introductory video on, on Kai OS. Kai OS powers an emerging ecosystem of affordable digital products and services. Our mobile operating system supports essential features like Bluetooth, GPS, Wi-Fi, 4G, LTE, and NFC. In just over a year, Kai OS went from zero to powering more than 80 million devices across more than 20 models. The Kai Store is the home of apps on Kai OS devices. Whether it's social media, games, travel, music, or utilities, we have all categories covered. The Carousel Launcher allows fast access to important apps and services like those from Google and Facebook. With WhatsApp on KaiOS, everyone everywhere can now stay connected to friends and family through the world's most popular messaging service. Play dance music on YouTube. The Google Assistant brings unheard of intelligence to smart feature phones and ensures accessibility for all. Kai Ads is the dedicated advertising solution on Kai OS with several different ad formats. It allows app developers and other content owners to earn revenue by making their services available in the Kai store. Kai OS, the emerging OS. The most popular smart feature phones are the Reliance Geo, Geophone 1 and 2. In fact, Geophone 2, which is 4G only and supports advanced features like Volti and EMBMS, will probably be very helpful for GeoTV in the long run. MTN Smart, a 3G smart feature phone, was just launched in the Nigerian market for 8,000 Naira, or around 22 US dollars. Orange Sansa is another 3G smart feature phone that is available to Orange customers in Mali, Burkina Faso and Côte d'Ivoire and will soon be available in another 13 countries. Oridu is another operator which is launching 4G smart feature phones in its markets. Around 16% or 30 million of Oridu's 180 million customers across 12 countries in the Middle East, North Africa and Southeast Asia still use feature phones with only voice and text capabilities. These smart feature phones will help bridge the digital divide. Again, these phones are expected to retail for roughly 25 US dollars. We look forward to interesting, exciting changes in the mobile industry. And it's not just about 5G, but also about bridging the digital divide. These smart feature phones will help more users connect to the internet and simply use the limited services they need. The main ones being WhatsApp, YouTube, Google Assistant, Google Maps, etc. Depending on their adoption and impact, operators will be able to decide which technology can be switched off and which remains on. We will have to wait and see for a few years before these decisions are made.